this is a spindle sander project and I've got one here without the sandpaper on it to just show the basic construction which is three quarter inch plywood discs that are cut out with a hole saw like this guy right here and you just stack those guys or glue them and screw them together to whatever height you want and cut them out to whatever diameter that you want and we'll talk more about those those dimensions in just a minute but then what I use is a uh, quarter inch hex bolt you can see right there the head of the hex bolt is recessed into the top disc uh, just to kind of lock it in place and then you've got a washer and a nut down at the other end so that bolt's not going anywhere this is where you lock down to either your your hand drill or your drill press chuck you know so holds it really well it's not going to come loose uh, works really actually really good so once you get it to that point um, you can see one of the the uh, these uh, one and a quarter inch sheetrock screws right here that's used to hold these discs together and on this side what's a little different is what you do is you'll drill a hole all the way through uh, that'll be a pilot for the more of these uh, sheetrock screws so they'll fit in there and, and screw in there and once you get that guy drilled all the way through then you'll come back and cut a notch in there that is a little bit wider than two two sandpaper thicknesses and uh, and to a depth of uh, in this case it's about a half an inch right here about a half an inch and that's going to be part of uh, your, your decision process with what size of a piece of uh, sandpaper that you want to cut out for this guy but I'll talk more about that in a minute uh, once you get get your sandpaper cut to size you know and you, you'll fold the tabs on each end a little bit shy or a little bit less than what that depth is right there then what I'll, I do is I will uh, fold these pieces together this is just a used piece that I had so it's it's not going to work really good but uh, it's all kind of chewed up a little bit but what I'll do is I'll I'll bring those tabs together like that and then I'll, I'll insert the spindle into that and I'm not sure if it's going to go because this thing is pretty chewed up but anyways so it slides on there like that uh, it's not wanting to go very well. Maybe I can try it. Another way you can do it is do it this way as well. Uh, is Although well, this does not work as good as the kind of sliding it in, but um, get that guy in there and just stuff that in. Uh, yeah. So it's not going to work as good as the other method with a fresh piece of sandpaper. And that kind of brings me to a, a little bit of a negative. See, there you go. So that guy's installed close to install it's not quite perfect but it's uh, pretty close so uh, once you once you get it to that point what you'll do is you'll take your uh, sheetrock screw and have it be on the on the right hand side of both pieces so both pieces of or both tabs of that sandpaper and the reason you want it on the right hand side rather than the left hand side is when you when you get that in there and you start turning it clockwise with your screwdriver what that's going to do is it's going to put uh, it's going to tend to want to tighten up slightly on the sandpaper because the sandpaper is going to want to rotate clockwise as well as you're, t as you're tightening this clockwise, right? So that's a little trick that uh, I find works pretty good on uh, helping to tighten this thing, tighten the sandpaper up. Um, but once you get it in there, it's locked in place. It's not going to go anywhere so much so that once, even when you, like you say you're ready to replace the, the sandpaper, uh, you get both the screws out. In the case of this guy, it, it's, a, it's a wide one, so I have a screw here and another screw on this side. Uh, by the way, this guy, he's just, just two discs or two thicknesses of plywood, so that uh, it's really just one screw that's holding that. There's no second screw on the bottom side, right? So, uh, but once you get those guys out of this, uh, what I find is that often I'll end up ripping the sandpaper to get that thing loose and out of there. I'm not going to have it need to do that this time because it wasn't really screwed in place but the reason why it's hard to get it out is because like you can see right here these grooves there's grooves here 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 they're from the sheetrock screw where the threads are biting into the sandpaper and forcing the, that sandpaper into the grooves of the plywood right so that it it naturally wants to just lock itself in there even without the, the sheetrock screw in place so you end up um, often ripping the sandpaper to get it out. So it's kind of like a one-time install for the sandpaper, but 
that it's you know easily replaced you know when you when you wear out the sandpaper you want to add another one it's easy to add another sheet uh, to it and so what I, I used for this big guy right here I used a two and a half inch hole saw and what that does is it allows you to use this is a partial sheet right here I cut out some some of this sheet already but this is the nine inch width right here and this would have been the 11 inch dimension right here so this guy the diameter of this guy is sized so that it will it will uh, use the full nine inch width and the height here is about or a little bit less than three inches right so uh, it's one less thing that you have to cut out so really I would just mark out the the, the dimension the three inch dimension here and then cut that out and not have to deal with the width dimension and then similar with the smaller size guys these guys are actually going to need a six inch long piece of sandpaper and what I, what I plan to do there is what I can do is cut out a um, mark out six inches cut that guy out so that'll be part of uh, sandpaper that I use to cut down you know the different um, heights that I need depending upon it's a short height or a tall height I, but what I end up with is a three inch strip on this side right here that I can use back on somewhere else I can use it here for example or use it here and uh, so it's about maximizing the usage of you know your sandpaper sheet and that's something to consider when you want to, when you're determining what size of these guys you, you want to, to make but you can make just about any size you want you know and you can make them smaller than this guy uh, I think though when you start to get much smaller than this you might need to use a smaller screw than these kind of standard sheetrock screws and you might need a smaller bolt as well but um, I know you can make them smaller than this if you need them and in terms of cost you know most of the cost is going to be the hardware uh, and I figure these are about 50 cents each to make and that's not including the sandpaper which is really you know probably another 10 cents probably uh, per per usage right so very inexpensive and not that difficult to make once you make them make once when you make them once it's a lot easier to make more of them you know, and uh, yeah this is a guy that I used uh, a long time ago uh, been using it for quite a while and it works great I actually glued on a, a piece of sandpaper on the, the top of, of the disc as, or the spindle as well and there you can you can sand inside corners or radiuses or and, and also sand flat surfaces at the same time Know when you do that so this is another trick uh, yeah like I said you know these guys would be used for sanding inside surf inside uh, corners or radiuses and uh, like this you know, on the inside radiuses or even on the outside radiuses as well so it can be pretty useful uh, and definitely want to have it around when you need it uh, they're very handy 